In this video, we use molten aluminum to make a cast of the underground nest of the Florida harvester ant, a characteristic species of the longleaf pine forests of the Gulf Coastal Plains. The ant is named for its habit of collecting seeds for storage and for later consumption. Well, this is a moderate-sized harvester ant nest, and you can see that they decorate the nest surface, the nest crater, with uh, bits of charcoal they collect. Okay, we found the nest, we chose that one over there, and now we're getting ready to set up the kiln. This is all the minor equipment. Vacuum cleaner to open the nest up. And then all the aluminum and the batteries and the kiln. Here. Okay, so we'll set it up here, cleared it out because of fire danger, obviously. The kiln is constructed from a 20 gallon garbage can insulated with a refractory fiber blanket and fueled with charcoal briquettes. Um, so we fill this with uh, charcoal. And we put the crucible in the middle. Still keep going. Um, we gotta take some out of the middle. Charcoal is rather difficult to ignite, so we use pine cones as a tinder to get it burning well. The steel crucible must be protected from heat and corrosion by molten metal by painting it with boron nitride, a material that is not wet by molten metal. The crucible must be recoated with every use. All right, uh, so the crucible is coated and uh, the coating is dry now, having been heated. And now we're going to add the aluminum. And it's going to be a lot of aluminum because we're trying to melt the full seven liters. So we just fill it up. Hmm? Air is forced into the kiln with a blower from a car heater. We're going to enlarge the nest opening so that it more accurately, more quickly. So I'm going to use a vacuum cleaner just to suck away some of the dirt. Molten aluminum must be heated to bright red color well above its melting point so that it will flow as deep as possible into the nest before freezing. Is it glowing? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's red hot. There. Touch my skin. Okay, grab it mid body. There. Wait till I get ready. Got it? Got it. Okay. Here we go. Let me do the pouring. Yep. Well, we got the metal poured and uh, we cooled it off a little with water and it's ready to dig. So I'm going to dig a pit next to the cast because we're going to work our way in from the side. And uh, this one looks like it's pretty big because we already hit a chamber there. So we're going to dig a pit big enough that we can work in it and then we'll work our way toward the nest and uh, gradually free it. This is the hard work part. You can see we've already struck a ouch. A chamber here which came from the nest so we got to dig down I'd say at least three feet which is probably as far as the aluminum went and then we remove the cast 
bolts and see whether we need the cast again. All right, time for me. Well, we're beginning to expose the, the cast and it looks like there are at least two vertical series of chambers, one over here where Elliot is working and the other one over here. There might be one on the far side too, but we can't tell yet. At least for this cast of it, you can see the tunnel here. As we expose the cast, the structure and complexity of the nest comes into view. Lobed horizontal chambers are connected to each other through helical tunnels. The largest chambers are near the surface, and chamber size generally decreases with increasing depth. Because slowly it might be hooked. No, nope, it's pretty good. And don't let it tilt. <coughs> Hold it above ground. Let me spin it around so you can. <coughs> Alright, it shows you how what fine features the aluminum cast. You see that little point there and a point there and a point there? That's where we had the wire flag stuck in the ground and then pulled it out. And the other one's over here. You can see that one too. Oh, it was before it got all the way to the bottom of the nest, obviously. So it's got down about, looks like two or three feet. And these are the beginnings of the uncast part of the nest. So we're gonna expose these openings and then we're gonna pour aluminum again. And we have, may have to repeat that a second time. So that's the only way you can get a complete cast if you, if you cast it in stages. This is the, uh, the second uh, chamber series, and I found the beginning of the uncast part. So I'm making a little, a little funnel to catch the aluminum and run it down into the, into the chambers. Ready, here we go. Yep. Going down. Look at that tight little helix. Pretty neat. Okay, Walter, will you take a pause and let us focus in on your red face? What's it like to be in a deep hole like that? Oh, it's profound. This is deep research? This is really deep. Deep, deep, deep ecology or what? Deep myrmecology. Third pour was necessary to complete the cast, but working in such a deep hole is dangerous. So we work oh. from the top edge of the pit. I have a little hook in the bottom. And we hook this in here. There. Now, just lower it down. And we pour. Isn't it kind of heavy? Not too bad. I'm resting it on my knees. And that's all it took.
that's it. It's obviously a, a big colony, even though it has only two vertical series of chambers. The total chamber area is quite large. So, and it's it's nice. It's uh, really complete. I think we only missed we're missing one chamber from right here. That's you know, the storage chambers. You can still see the seeds glued to the bottom. They sort of burnt on. Those are these here. That's one. Here's another. Seeds are kind of carbonized. Uh, I only see those two right now, but they're. the holes. You fill it the bottom first, but if you can fill the top first, it's a lot faster. All right. I'll... Filling the hole is hard work and no fun, but it has to be done.